Hello, welcome everyone to I What Uncut, an event designer's business podcast. I'm your host, Lucy Molina. In today's podcast episode, we have a very special guest who does live painting, elevates an experience like no other to an artistic element. Her name is Emily Bolvig, and welcome, Emily. Hi, it's so nice to meet everybody. Um, yeah, live event painting is really fun. My business name is Renaissance Event Painting, and you can check me out on social media. My handles for everything is Ren Art Live, a little bit more catchy. Um, so thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here. And thank you for taking the time. And I'm so excited because you really do bring an artistic element to all events by doing live painting. So before we dive into just your business and exactly let's start from the beginning like how did you get started well um i guess to take it back to the origin story um i as a child did not want to be an artist even <laughs> though i did draw all the time i was the only child and it was fun to do and but i hate hated being pigeonholed as an artist and have people write me off as like oh she's the art girl so I actually studied economics in college and did everything I could to try and um, remove myself from this identity that had kind of been like flung upon me. But I ultimately, as I got out into the real world, we do, we cling to the things that we just know how to do. So I used the experience that I had working with startups to apply to my own means of production and somehow found myself back in the world of art with a completely new mentality on the subject and led to the creation of this business because um, it didn't really start out with live painting. It started out with pet portraits, ironically. That's super cute. Yeah. And when I was in the ninth grade, I had a pet portrait business that gained so much traction that it completely burnt me out. You know, as a little ninth grader trying to do exams and paint like a juggle high school job. and everything involved yeah yeah so that that burnt me out for a long time but coming back to art I was like okay well if I could run a successful pet portrait business in the ninth grade I'm pretty sure I can start there and elevate yeah so I I started out going to um just the Saturday green market, like the farmer's market, or even there's this little dog friendly bar um, locally. And I would go and paint 20 minute pet portraits. So starting in that really small setting with the the low risk, smaller paintings that I was super used to, it gave me the feel for live painting because I knew that it was something that I ultimately wanted to branch out into. I love the the kind of on the spot um, pressure that I feel like helps me personally do my best work. From there with the, the pet portraits, I started doing larger and larger works, mostly starting out as gifts. You know, they, they say if you're not willing to work for free, then, um, you know, the more you give, the more you get. That's and so true. Yeah. So you're like you were basically specialized at first. You're like, I'm going to do pet portraits and from there, you're like, I need to grow my business, which you've always been an entrepreneur starting since ninth grade doing a little, you know, starting your little business. That's impressive. And taking it on. And like you said, correct, like you worked in, you know, the finance world and you were doing it for other companies and now you're doing it for yourself. So at what point did you say, OK, I can do this live painting? Like how how did you dip into the water and ocean of the event world? OK, well, you're right, because it is such a dichotomy of like, how did I get from this mentality of no art ever to art is my life? And really what happened was I lost my portfolio. I lost an entire portfolio with like seven years of my work. I found it. I found oh, okay. it. Spoiler. But in the time that I lost it, I was like, oh, my gosh, why? did I not do anything with this art? I just started thinking about like how much I could have sold it for. And th the fact that nobody got to appreciate it was yeah. the thing that really cut deep. I was like, wow, my art really just goes to my portfolio to die if I don't do anything with okay. it. That's what pushed me to art was that was kind of an epiphany type moment. But then for live painting, that was more so out of the love for 
pushing myself. Yeah. Um, I think that me trying to always get out of my comfort zone, do anything but art, which I knew how to do, that kind of still transcends to the live painting because it pushes me to be better in the moment. And it is a challenge, which I really embrace and love. But also the live painting, I love to see people's experience with live art because I, it's so rare that we get to see how the sausage is made when it comes to art. We see the final product, mm -hmm. but it's not very often that artists will sometimes share the more unpretty parts of their process. Like even when you see an Instagram reel online, they're showing you like a sped up perfect version. version. Yeah. And so to see the art happening live, I experience a different synergy with the art and with the people who are seeing the art. And it motivates me to finish the piece as well, because a lot of times artists will hit like a roadblock yeah. with their art. I'm the same way if I'm just working on something at home, I'll hit a like, oh my gosh, I don't want to work on this anymore. Yeah. But when I'm there live painting, it's like, all right, get it together. We got to push through. And it always, I always end up sort of surprising myself with what I'm able to accomplish under those intents. And also you're kind of feeding off the energy with all this stuff going around, like yes. especially in events and stuff, they're like nonstop. I, you said something so key. So it's like the Instagram versus reality, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So as you mentioned on Instagram, we see the sped up version of something beautiful and it's like, bam, mm -hmm. you know, the portrait. So I can only assume that we, you know, when clients are booking you, they're thinking, Oh, you could do, you know, little portraits in five minutes. Mm -hmm. Like it's the Instagram reality component. Like you, how do you educate the clients in that sense? Like, like, how do you walk them through the process? Like, how did you come to terms with all of that? It is definitely the responsibility of live artists to educate people not only about what their capabilities are, but that this service exists and that it's approachable and easy to incorporate because um, it is so new. And it is very new. Like, mm -hmm. when did you, what would, what year would you say is that it really like kicked off? Man, it, I started seeing videos long before I started doing it. And, you know, I started getting a little idea in my head, like maybe I'm delusional, but I might be able to do this too. Um, and you definitely can. You're very talented. <laughs> but run me back with the question from the first, first one. So what year do you think it really picked up, picked up? Yeah, maybe I think COVID was when a lot of people started getting these ideas. Like as we were coming out of COVID. Everyone thought um, of the experience, like how to elevate it. Yeah, you know, we were yearning for social activity, like human um, interaction. interaction. But more than that, I think we were also yearning for meaning um, in our lives as well. And to see something real and tactile because a lot of people were held up in their homes kind of kind of associating with a virtual world or maybe even coming face to face with themselves for the first time in a long time maybe even ever and people um either flourish or really had a hard time during that period and so i think a lot of art has come a long way since covid and because of covid because it's a very futuristic futurism type media because it's detailing things that might not even be able to be put into words yet. Like that's kind of the essence of art. And that's so, so beautiful. It's a very poetic way to say it. Because live painting is something real in the moment it almost like surprises and startles people and they can't help but be oh, invested be invested in it and and want to see how it's coming along throughout the night and it's a still image but it's in the moment alive and living and people get to see the birth of this art and 
how it comes to be. And then not only when they look at that painting, will they remember the night, but they'll also remember the experience behind it. Right, right. So it's a really fun and multi-dimensional it experience to have at your wedding and it's a little um it's just i i think it's a great and unique um, it's definitely different experience. and unique mm-hmm. so once you're there not you know not only just deciding like hey i want to do the live painting how did you piece it together and say hmm let me start doing events like how did Mm-hmm. you know, the live painting for events really flourish with your company? Sure. Um, I I think that all of my best ideas have come from other people. Um, just saying, hey, you should like give this a try and me being like, okay, I'll give it a try. And so when I was doing the, the dog painting, the live dog painting, um, somebody said, hey, have you ever considered doing like a wedding? And I was like, you know, I've seen that, but I just don't know. Like, this is very approachable for me. When I started doing events, I just kind of started cold calling. Um, Surprisingly, um, I had just great feedback from the wedding planners. um, So you started, so wait, so just to confirm, so you started cold calling what did you do? What was your process? Because this is so key and important that when you're growing your business, you have to put in the legwork and the footwork of getting yourself out there and letting people, hey, I have this service for you. That is so important. So take me through the process of what you did. Like, did you Google the names and come up with the list? Or did you remember different people? Like, how did you do this? I guess I had no clue where to start, but I was I just had it on a hunch. I just Googled wedding planners near me and (laughs) I'm not even joking. And I called the first number that I called. It was the nicest lady on the other end of the line. I just said, hi, my name is Emily. Uh, I'm a live event painter who's new to the area. I just like claimed that this is my title now. And um, it really just came down to me deciding that that is what I was, that's what I'm doing, and then shouting it from the rooftops as loud as I could. And I just got so blessed and lucky because the very first lady who answered the phone was like, you know, you're new. You should go and talk to, it was Atlas. And um, they were like, you should go and talk to Atlas. Like they have these really cool events it, she was like clients. you need to start going to these networking parties that they throw for event planners because that's where you can go and meet a bunch of people and so I was like okay and so I started finding more of those networking events because I realized that it was a place where I could try it out without having the burden of somebody having paid for the work you know yeah. because it was essentially a gift um I had the opportunity to see if I could do it, to try it out, because that really was a big leap of faith in my eyes. You know, maybe I had gone out and painted outside, but I'd never done it in front of people with a time limit. But being in that encouraging environment and also being around people who are interested in what you're doing and might potentially hire you is motivating. It's also a very supportive community where you're exhibiting yourself and what you can do or at least that's how it felt is like I'm showing off what I can do and seeing who bites yeah. you know I didn't know if it was gonna work if anybody was gonna like it's like it a risk you, the, it the, is a risk uh it's everything just putting yourself out there yeah you know the worst thing that happens is nobody comes up to you nobody says anything and then you leave and you're like Okay, I need to change my strategy. But in business, that's so important because you need to be able to risk to see a reward. And at the end of the day, when you risk something, there's never a loss because you learn something in the process as well. Like you said, you put it out there and it's like, will it work? Will it not? But at least, you, like you mentioned, you will get more practice out of it. Like Mm -hmm. you'll feel like, okay, can I do these crazy, 
events that all the, you know, like, cause there's so many parts that are moving and happening at the same time as you're do as you're painting. Mm -hmm. It's not just people coming to look like there's drinking, there's dancing, there, like there's so much going on at once. So you were getting a feel for it, but also at the same time, you're, you're taking such a great confidence step, which is putting yourself out there and making those connections. Because I, I, the number one thing I think a lot of people always forget is that cold calling is still a thing. Like, just like you said, Googling, it's not just Googling and sending them an email, like calling, picking up the phone, having that, you know, human interaction where, like you said, the first call you made, you were like, wow, this is such a sweet person. Mm -hmm. And from there, they gave you advice and so forth. Like, and now you're building your business yeah. and events. A lot of people don't look at emails or DMs or they, it just, it seems a little less personal. It could be an ad. They can't see your face, hear your voice. And so I've had just from my personal experience, I've had 10 times better success just calling places before I even try to contact them with by email, just so that they at least know that to look out for my email. When I'm following up with people, I'll try and call them, leave them a voicemail, and then send them an email that says, sorry, we missed each other. Yeah. Um, so then they're, they might see that in their email and be like, oh, you called me? Oh, I guess you did. Mostly, though, I didn't want to rely on the algorithm. I wanted to rely on things that I could see and touch and know um, personally because that's how... I operate as an artist that just works better with my brain, but also finding a local network, it's really, really important. And it's much more secure than hoping you go viral or, you know, all of these contacts online. I so much prefer when the peop when the I get a follower from somebody that I met because it's like you are a real person in my brain. And I think that that goes a long way with when you're starting your business because you don't really realize how small the world around you is until you start realizing how the people in the world are connected together because so many people that I've met just one-on-one, -on -one, I had no idea that they knew each other or um, stuff like that. So. It's, it's been interesting to see how the referral base has, it's kind of like trying to catch a wave when you're surfing, you're churning, churning, churning. And then at some point you kind of take that leap of faith and hop up onto the surfboard and try and ride the wave and keep up with the momentum that you've put into place and hope that the, the legwork that you've done in the beginning to make good connections with real people around you will hopefully support and carry you towards your success together because it's a very collaborative environment. Absolutely, it is. And as you mentioned, it's catching that wave and continuing that momentum. How do you stay motivated in running your own business? Ooh, that's a tough one because it's not every day that you wake up just ready to go there's like some days that feel very aimless because for I'm a solo individual doing this and it's kind of the first time in my life that I've made so many unilateral decisions and it's a little uncomfortable at first to trust yourself because especially when you've been working in a corporate environment and coming out of school you're always kind of asking like am I doing this right and now I yeah. got nobody to really ask because sure they might know parts of what I'm doing but the whole thing it's kind of a little bit uncharted no matter what it somebody is doing they're always trying to do something new right. and different for themselves that's why they're doing it because they think that it's new keeping myself motivated is kind of on a day-to-day -day basis I think that there's different things that you can implement into your routine um, and being forgiving with yourself on days when you're like, I just can't do it today. I'm trying to still find homeostasis and balance in what I'm doing because I work a lot on the weekends. 
And then I still schedule stuff for myself throughout the week. So I'm trying to find like, what's my off day, you know? It's because especially as an entrepreneur and a business owner, that's the hardest balance, I think, is finding like your time because you're on all the time. It's like a nonstop go, right? Right. Especially with... It comes you. Yeah, it bec- you, are, you are the brand. Um, so that's like a very important thing. And how do you translate that through getting your clients? Because just as people like referrals, right? Which mm-hmm. like you said, going to networking events was so key because from there you met like all these planners in one space per se. And then you meet people and then they recommend you. But outside of the planners, do how do you go about getting clients? Like what has been your game plan with that? With getting clients, I get a lot from the expos that I'm associated with and from that referral base um, of the wedding planners because a lot of brides are looking for something different and a lot of times they look to their wedding planners to advise them about what's out there and what might fit with the aesthetic that they're going for. So there's a lot of ways to get in front of brides. I guess for me, because I'm a vendor, I kind of view the wedding planners and these people within the industry as my as my coworkers, as potential inbounded leads because yeah. they might reach out to me. Um, the brides are more of outbounds at this stage. It's, yeah. it's my hope that, you know, in the near future that they'll become more inbound than outbound. I mean, that's everybody's dream. <laughs> but um, for the most part, it's running ads on things like Instagram and Facebook. Um, I'm focusing on boosting like the Google search analytics. I mean, the, the finite microeconomics of how you're running the marketing campaign. I never realized how important that was, but you know, I think people are scared sometimes to run ads and use these sources because it's another risk it's a financial risk and when you're just starting out you don't want to take a lot of financial risk and you're like I can do this but then when you actually think about it and you're like okay say I'm like spending five dollars a day on an ad if I book one event it's gonna cover my month of ads you know or and then some hopefully interesting how you change the mindset when you're reaching out there as what's the potential for return on investment? Because some expos, like some of the big expos might charge you like $1,000 to have a booth. Some places it might just be like $30. But even when you're- What has been the most expensive expo, if you don't mind me asking, uh, so far? The ACS Expo in Fort Lauderdale. Was the most expensive. Yes, but um, you know, I met so many people there and it was so worth it because even though I think it was like, am I allowed to say how much it was? <laughs> you, it's up to you. This is real and uncut. You can say it. Okay. It was 1200 bucks. Yeah. And, but I was like, and you got like a small space, right? It was like a, it was a 10 by 10. I think it was like the average. Oh, that. Okay. Cause but, it was the eight by eight. So it's- yeah. But, um, you know, that was, I think there were like 5,000 brides and then you get a num- a list of 2,000 names yeah. um, and, and follow up. Right, right. And, and was that at the event that I saw you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's where we met. Yeah. So Second time because we met first at the Atlas event that mm-hmm. you did a live painting at. Mm-hmm. I was so impressed and mind blown because I just find it so cool. Like you said, it's not just something different, but it's something people get to keep. And actually hang up as like, a, like it's a, you know, you know, like a memorable moment that they'll never forget. First is a photo album you put away and then it's like a coffee table piece, but like a painting, like, yeah, who doesn't love a painting of the most beautiful moment of your life. Right. And it's christening your new home together as husband and wife and with the art as well. Like you said, with the, the photos, like we love the photos, but it's hard to choose like just one to blow up and put yeah. on the wall and so a lot of times our photos are reserved for a special night when we're looking back and 
that is a really special thing to be able to have to look back through those memories but being able to also look up on the wall and see, and the, see the painting i mean that might even push you to go look at your photo album and yeah. think about it more often but i think people appreciate symbolic reminders and it's a good one hopefully as a designer and also as a future bride to be i have one store that i cannot stop going to and that's event decor direct event decor direct has your one-stop shop for all decor items from fabrics to hardware to ceiling draping to dance floor wrap prints and so much more it is honestly obsessing how much i can just look through here and i'm like Hmm, I should add that to my event. As all of you that are listeners and viewers, you get iWet Uncut 11 as your code to get 11% off on the website. All you have to do is put iWet Uncut 11 to get 11% off. And you will see that your design process will become so much easier. So whether you're a designer, a bride to be, or someone who just loves the industry and loves designing, this is your one stop shop. And I think you made such an amazing point that after COVID, everyone wanted a different experience. They wanted that connection, emotional and physical connection, because during COVID, it was like such a, it was just such a crazy time. And now with events, everyone wants a client experience because what are some of the other services, which I won't say it, I'll let you, that you offer for, you know, potential clients? Like let's say as a, a planner comes to you, says I have this couple, what are some additional services you offer with the live painting? Sure. So besides just the one big piece, and there's a couple sizes on that, I also do the small souvenir paintings, and there's two different styles for those. Some people prefer a more realistic face, um, and then some people prefer a more artistic, stylized, kind of runway, full body mm -hmm. painting. And like an illustration. Right, mm -hmm. right. Um, and those are really fun because everybody kind of gets to go home or may, not everybody because they That's, do take yeah. about they take about 10 minutes a piece. But the the guests who sign up to do it get to go home with a personalized painting and memory from that night. Um, and I personally I've seen people hang them up in their houses because they are they, they're cute there it's a portrait of you and your guest it's a complete composition so the they make a really nice it's a cute memento. party favor yes like that's a that's a fantastic party favor giving your guests like a little you know drawing of themselves like that's so cute mm -hmm. what are some other services because i know also you do the what is it the wedding the the dress fitting yeah that's so cool too so that's really fun because there's i'm trying to incorporate more places for live painting so if you have any ideas you're always welcome comment down below or reach out to her seriously like i said i get all my best ideas from people who are like hey have you ever tried this that is really fun because i can actually complete a couple of dress paintings in the time that you're there so maybe you're not locked in on like which one's the one but we can we can get three done so your top three that you think you're gonna choose from that one's really fun because it's like all the girls like if i've had girls a group of girls come and they are all trying on the watching the bride try on the wedding dress and and it makes it a fun little festive thing and um the other thing that I do there's some non-live paintings that I love to mention to people because people have gotten engagement paintings before and you can't do that live at the engagement it's a little too brief you know <laughs> that can be painted and also at the rehearsal dinner you know some people might get a painting of the engagement done at the rehearsal dinner um, and then a, another live painting at the wedding the next night of the actual wedding wedding there's plenty of places for it and um, all the live painters out there are so fantastic because everyone has a different style oh for so, sure you know even though there might be a couple of live painters out here 
we all love and support each other because every like I use watercolor a lot of people use acrylic and oil and it just comes out with a completely different feel to it but it's all still art and when you're in that whole experience of let's say you're at the wedding how did how do you feel when you're painting you know a couple special day like what are some of the emotions especially the, not to mention the fact that there's so much going on at once but what are like does that inspire you more or like flare your creativity even more when you're painting because you're seeing like you're you're constantly working in weddings and events that are just like even if you don't know the person if they had a beautiful speech you can't help but cry so like how do you handle that so artists when they're talking about creativity and inspiration it kind of feels like electricity a little bit and so <laughs> There's a lot of electricity in the air at an event, you know? There's a lot of energy and emotion, like you said, but what better substance to capture in an artwork than those pure emotions of joy and fun? And I just feel like there's so much fear mongering and negativity and darkness in the world that being able to capture that event it's rewarding but also to know that i i have a i have a giving nature that i receive a lot when i give a gift like personally you know i'm just like oh that made me feel good that random act of kindness and so doing art for others it's like maybe i'm not able to appreciate my artwork as much as i should because Maybe I never even I, wanted to be here, but you I, do. I think that's uh, so meaningful. And to add to that, I think it's because all artists, anyone in the creative field, I feel like we are our own toughest critics. Hmm. We're constantly, like, just as much as we know, like, we're good at this, we also are like, is that good enough? <laughs> well, we know that we could be better. Or with artists, there's like a gap between what we envision and what we're actually able to produce. And a lot of, like, most of the reason why creativity gets beaten out of people is they are discouraged that they'll never be able to close that gap. And sure, it might be an eternal struggle, but it's a positive struggle. And it's ultimately, even though it might be a little torturous in the moment, it's constantly pushing you to be better and a lot of most of the time artists look back at a painting they haven't seen in a long time and they're like you know what that actually was pretty good <laughs> it's just hard to see when in the moment <laughs> right so, like I will always bring a mat and a frame and this certificate of authenticity so that I can give it to you if it's done right then and there yeah. which I try to do but a lot sometimes I'll be like can I take this home and just like look at it tomorrow morning because if I have the opportunity to do that just put it away from my face for a minute I'll be able to catch you know maybe some little detail that you wouldn't have noticed anyway but for me the artist it's it's nice to be able to go and do a touch up the next day but no for sure <laughs> but I completely get I think everyone can relate to that that you look at your work and you're like it's good but then you're just like nitpicking it the longer you look at it if especially if you've been working on it for hours it's like oh oh my god th that needs to be changed. like and then like you said it's like <laughs> we gotta just let it go and then you know do what we can especially when it comes to events because like for example which we'll go over some of the pictures you did uh and that you painted and everything when you're in that moment or even looking at these events it's the same thing with you are working with planners and designers, you'll hear them change their mind like a thousand times, even though they're in that moment, you know, transforming a space. They're like, you know, no, no, what? No, 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 never mind. Let's fold the napkin like this. It's that same thing. I think all creatives deal with that, but. I think it's <laughs> totally because the, the piece of artwork that the creator's interacting with, even if it is an event, which I totally consider art, uh, it's like a symphony of, you know, people and, moving parts okay so as i was mentioning on the screen we're going to be having the different art designs mm -hmm. that you have created these masterpieces of events so i'm going to show you something i want you to like walk through like 
especially how does it work, right? For those of you that are not familiar with live painters, they're amazing and it's an experience like no other. As people are walking around cocktail hour, I always see them kind of like stop and look and they're just in awe because you're just there going at it, working. Like when you were here for the Lux class, our students were like mind blown. They were just like watching you because it's like so beautiful <laughs> to see it come to life. So for each of these, explain a little bit about like the process. So here's the first one. Okay, so for this one, this was a demo that I made because I wanted to show something really, really challenging in an artwork to, because with demos, it's like, okay, I'm doing this just to do it and to have an example to show people. So I needed to show something. And this showed the veiling. Um, I think it's really difficult to paint transparent stuff, which a veil is. I love this picture because the veil is over top of them and so it shows that I can kind of capture this ethereal nature to wedding photos a lot of times. they, I mean the bride, I, I would love to make the bride's dress look like she's glowing, you know? Yeah. Um, and watercolor has the really great capacity to capture subtlety and to create transparency because it is a transparent medium yeah. um so this was a wonderful exercise for me to be able to captivate that transparency and ethereal glow i love it it's so pretty thank you and here's another one okay this one was a live painting did you actually see this one when i was doing it i don't think i I don't think I did. Okay, you might have been there on the first day, but I actually did this live painting at the second day of the ACS Bridal Expo. Um, and I love this painting because it has a lot of motion. I love the horses. Horses were actually the first animal that I learned how to draw when oh, I was a so kid. Cool. It was I had the little drawing books with the circles and the yeah. square and it was horses. <laughs> I, I was really trying to capture motion and show the potential of what the painting can be because a lot of times people will want a live painting, but they'll, they'll have no idea what they want the painting to be of. It's especially hard to Pick kind of- one moment to capture. And visualize it beforehand, you know? Um, there's, it's a little tough, but what I do is, I have a consultation call with the bride and we talk about what her special favorite details of this wedding that she's planned are. Like, is it the bouquet? Is it the, do we love the table settings? Do, and so we'll try and find a way to incorporate those favorite elements into the painting and decide whether or not we want it to be from a photo or from the organic live scene or some combination of the two. Like right. for example, if they want the, the first dance, I can get started on painting the venue and then kind of do this abstract. Oh, so you can piece it together mm -hmm. to come so, to the like, big picture. Right, so I can do the, the crowd in the room organically and then when the first dance happens, either work with the, the, Photographer. the photographers or try and snap some pictures myself of that particular dip or spin um, that you were hoping to capture in the painting. Um, so cool. So yeah. Um, so that was the, that one then? Yes. Motion. Motion. And then here are some, and they'll be again on the screen, everyone, of you in action. I, you know, I have to say that it's so cool because I, I, you have like your signature style. Like even when meeting you and even now, like you just have like this very like super like artistic aura that's like so chill and like easy to talk to that I can see like your clients, like brides and even working the planners, it's so easy to kind of like feel comfortable with you, especially because think about it, like they're, you know, in, and especially in photos, people tend to get awkward because they're posing and things like that. Mm -hmm. But with the painting, it's like, you know, you're, you're grabbing that moment and it's just, it's so beautiful. It's very poetic. 
I really appreciate that. That means that means a lot coming from oh, you. Oh, thank you. Um, I think it's also really easy to be personal with people because I'm bringing them a product that's for their pure enjoyment. Um, yeah. I think planners are in a more a professional role. Budgeting their money. Right. <laughs> well, you're also kind of, you're very interconnected with all the vendors there. And because... I'm just a solo artist. I bring my easel. I set up in the corner with a good view of the room. And that's all. I'm kind of very independent. And I'm just trying to bring to life something that you care deeply about. And so people, when they're talking about art, are more inclined sometimes to open up about the things that they truly care about and want to capture in that art which is really exciting to me because you help create meaning through a piece of paper. I mean, yeah. essentially. So it's fun. And do you want to show this piece? So, so the, the one you did for the Lux class. Yes. Something so amazing that I was going to say is the fact that she attended one of the Lux classes to see how it goes in action, everything. And she was so kind to actually do one of the setups for this, this is for the ceremony space. You want me to grab and, it? Yeah, you can show it in the camera. We'll also be able to put a photo so you guys can all see it. But look how beautiful that is. Capturing the draping, the florals, down to like this whole just like vocal element that we had in the ceremony space. Even if someone's trying to like build their portfolio and things like that, you know, when they're mm -hmm. trying to show their clients like work, I think this is great to show like this and then the real life photo of the production. Have you ever worked, and this is just throwing it out there, with a designer that says, I have this idea, but I don't know how to piece it together. And do they ever ask you to sketch it or anything like that? Lots of times people will be very, I guess you could say, open-ended about what they want. So when people come with an open-ended kind of concept. I think that it's less open-ended than even they realize. And so once again, it's the responsibility of the artist, just like it is the wedding planner to ask the right questions, mm -hmm. um, to hone in, even if they're kind of checking things off the list as that's a definite no. Um, so trying to specify and even say, well, would you like this? Even if you get a no, it's still leading you in some direction. So I'll always try and clue, kind of take in these clues until I start getting a mental image of what they're looking for. And then I can sketch it for them because I always love to make sure that we're on the same page before I get started. It's a little more difficult than... It, or not difficult, but it's a little more time consuming than taking a photograph. So if I mess up and we're not on the same page and I start this live painting. more layers to it for sure. Right. I, it's not like I can just start over or if it's not what you want. It's like this is going. This is live. Um, that's kind of some of the fun of it, though. But that's why before I start painting, even if the photos are being taken in the midst of the event, I'll always confirm before I get started, is this what you want? And that's that's so true for anybody in this industry to have that step because sometimes things, just like when you put watercolor on the paper, it doesn't come all the way off. Um, sometimes there are things that can't be undone on the wedding day. It is such an important day that it's our responsibility as vendors to be good listeners. And if it's not to the bride's liking to try and do everything we can to... Customer service is so key. Right. To correct that before you get too deep into it. Like I will bring a second sheet of paper, but I will draw it out and even have a second like okay, are we liking how this is going so far? Yeah. So that before I get an hour into the painting and I've already used up a fourth of my time, you know, there's no going back at that point. So I'll 
double check, triple check in the first 20, 30 minutes of the painting to make sure it's going in the direction it's needed. Right. And also something to keep in mind, especially to those of you that are, you know, very active in the event design field, reaching out to an artist like Emily is great as well when you need to really impress the client and show them like those ideas that you have and you don't know how to put it on paper. Collaborating with someone like Emily is fantastic to really impress them, to show them actual like overview mock-ups of what something can be especially for your portfolio to have kind of like those drawings and then the real life picture next to it it shows how you take a vision and put it into reality Mm -hmm. so that's something to look forward to so now it's time to get started with a hot round of questions so what you're going to do is pick out two questions from here and then you're just going to answer them with whatever comes to your mind first all right The most unexpected or bizarre event theme or request you've ever received from a client? Hmm. I think the most, the most unique event painting that I've had to do was, it was a pirate themed event and they had a real, I don't know if you could call it real, but it was like a stage life-size pirate ship with like skeletons and stuff on it and that was such a cool event because i was painting a piece of artwork essentially yeah this huge pirate ship was this for the event lauren ashley catering yes yes (laughs) that was one of the coolest events i've been to she's very creative when it comes to doing these like annual halloween parties but when you said that i was like I was like, ooh, that's amazing. They did a whole stage and it was like a huge ship and mm-hmm. yeah. That was that was really fun because I mean, I've seen some really nice classy events, but when you get something just wacky like that, like a pirate ship, I mean I had so much fun painting that because it's so different. Yeah, that was that was a nice That's so time. cool. See, <laughs> this is also to show you that how in the industry everyone kind of knows each other because yeah. <laughs> Laura's also been a guest on the podcast. And then like Emily, like you're in the, you know, um you're from well, you serve all the Palm Beach and Miami area. Mm-hmm. But right, have you seen that now that once you're in this business, it's like, oh, that person knows that person. That's like, what I was talking about with when you start, when you stay local and just start putting yourself out there, you realize how small the world around you is and the network because I never would have had any idea. Like, it makes so much sense now that how you guys are, because y'all are all independent, business-owning women, and y'all all just get together and do crazy stuff and do awesome business and that's so exciting i always say i'm like anyone who enters into the event field i feel like we're all just like love what we do but also there has to be a little bit of like loving that craziness because (laughs) nonstop. it's like you said like especially in any business i feel like but especially in the creative field it's constantly changing because you're working with so many people. It's moving parts of vendors that even, you know, like you said, you work with a planner or let's say a venue, anything like that. Like it can change in a second. They're like, oh, you know what? Actually, we need it for these next two days. Mm-hmm. And also we're moving up the timeline and you're just like, uh, 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 OK, it's like a nonstop. <laughs> yeah, that that's so true. That's so true. And every day you're going to be trying to answer a question you've never been asked before (laughs) which is just speaks to creatives and adaptability is i feel like at least speaking for myself i feel like this is true sometimes for other people that we get bored doing the same thing over and over again or answering the same question every day which is why we love the crazy chaos of being (laughs) of uh, events yeah so having those curveballs is kind of what we live for but also it's like a love-hate relation it's a double-edged sword yes a double-edged sword for sure make sure you you comment (laughs) down below if you agree with that that it's a it's a it's it's a constant (laughs) love-hate it's a lot of love but then sometimes you're like man i have to work on a holiday right (laughs) i'm booked and i'm busy so second question okay okay (laughs) Ooh. Hmm. 
Do you have a favorite personal event in your life that holds a special place in your heart and what made it unforgettable? Clock is ticking. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm like, I'm going to put the buzzer. No, just kidding. No, you're right. You're right. Okay. The most special event that I have been The first one that comes to your mind. That's why these are hot questions. Okay. Because whatever comes into your mind first, it's like you have to spill it out. Even if it's one that you're just like, "Uh, should I say it? This is uncut, so you can say whatever. Okay. The most special event that I've been to, I got to say... Right now, at this stage, for me, I'm still clinging very much to my first live painting experience. That was so special because it was a moment of actualization of so many dreams and things that I had been thinking about. And it was very validating to get positive feedback um, because when I got there, I was very unsure, but I left feeling very confident in myself for the first time in a long time because for once I didn't have imposter syndrome I was like you know what I just proved to myself that this is something that I can actually do and that was a very liberating moment um, to have kind of this debut into a new whole new world of event planning and um, simultaneously being reborn myself. So it's amazing. So thank you for answering the hot questions. <laughs> you were just like, uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm always like I'm too calculated sometimes. <laughs> you're hey, that's your finance, like background. You're yeah. like, that's amazing that you're like both like the, you know, what do they say? The right and left brain. Yeah. Together <laughs> mix. It's beautiful. So What do you see the future being for your business? I think the future ultimately comes after achieving homeostasis and what I'm doing. I'm still seeking a little bit of that balance, but I'm cataloging everything that I do along the way because I hope to evolve evolve one day into being a mentor I know it's something that you can't do until you've gone and gotten that experience but because I have a business background I think that I have a lot to give and to other artists because a lot of artists don't even wouldn't even know where to start when they want to do a live painting business because it is a business you know yeah and that's not taught in art school so I would love to create some kind of platform or replicatable system that can be packaged to teach other artists to um, build their own live painting business or even create some kind of network it's yet to be uh it's yet to really form a solid community and anything that I could do to help form that community, I think is what the evolution of this looks like, is to find people out there who want to be live painters and help them on their path to do that. Because as the industry grows, we all grow. Absolutely. That is a thousand percent true. What would you say to someone that is aspiring to being a business owner? Like, what would you tell them if they're scared or on the fence about it? Okay, if you're going to do it, you got to 100% commit because if you're not, if you're dividing your attention, we think we're good multitaskers, but we are never good at multitasking as we want to be. And when you're pushed against a wall like that, maybe this is just true for me, but (laughs) when you're (laughs) under the gun, pushed against the wall, pushed to perform, that's when our survival drive kicks in and we're actually able to achieve things beyond what we ever thought possible. It just takes putting yourself in the vice grip and in that hard situation. But if it's something that's for your business, every success, no matter how small, is yours and no one can take that from you. And that was the number one difference that I felt going to work for myself even the little small things I was like this is this is for me this is something that I did and you just 
keep holding on to those feelings. No matter how and, hard it gets, no matter what comes your way. And build on them. And they'll start happening more and more often. And you'll start setting higher and higher goals from yourself before you even know it. It's just kind of... Great. And then what is like a motto or mantra that you lean on that you would want to share with our listeners and viewers today? The one that I've been leaning on a lot lately, it's so funny you say that, is it's just a matter of time. Oh. And I say that because if you can just find a pace that works for you and keep holding to that pace, maybe you can step it up one day, but if you could just hold to a pace, it's just a matter of time before you meet the right person or you're or the right thing happens and you just just keep going. I love that. And where can our viewers and listeners view your work or even reach out to you? Do you want to we'll make sure to pop in all of her social media handle for Instagram, Facebook and your website. But feel free to reach out to Emily. As you can see, she is so sweet and super talented. And to all of you that are looking to elevate any event experience, doing live painting is an amazing way to create it like memorable, unforgettable, like overall experience, I feel like. Uh, it will not only show to your clients that there's something different because we're all looking for something different out there. I think, especially when they're in the process of, you know, designing their dream wedding, they want something memorable. So live painting for sure. Make sure to reach out to Emily. She does cater a lot to, I would say South Florida to North Florida. Mm -hmm. You're down, you're open to all of Florida. Aren't you? That's the fun thing about being in West Palm beach is you're kind of wedged in the middle. Yeah. Between a lot of stuff. So make sure to reach out and thank you so much to all of you that listened and watched today. And thank you so much, Emily, for being a guest on the podcast today. Thank you so much for having me. I hope you all reach out to me, even if you just want to be friends in the industry. I love meeting people. And I this has just been so fun. So thank you. Thank you, Emily. And thank you, everyone. And we'll see you at the next podcast episode. Bye.